you know. Well, Andy, on that, I was going to say, um, you know me as well, that I'm, I'm from a very similar background, a lot of um, bad areas, bad things. You know, you go through stages like that and you're getting through them is good. But the thing I've learned from my daughter passing away was teaching me that um, everything around you is more important than you. The balance that you, you give to other people is so much more and it comes back at you so much faster. To look at yourself as a blame, that uh, was not to blame yourself, but to accept what you've done as a person is very hard to do. And me, as knowing my background, when I, when I lost my daughter, everyone expected me to react totally differently. And they expected the worst, and um, I expected the worst, to be honest, too. But um, I think, if anything, I learned from it. The shock made me really go deep inside myself to find out what was wrong. And I think that now, amongst my friends, and you know a lot of my friends, um, how that's spreading, how it's starting to share, that they expected me to be a different person and how I've reacted to this and how I've got into it and how I'm starting to be more open about it and a lot, a lot better person I find that, that that does brush onto others and it's slowly going down the chain line. So I think it's important to realise that, you know, sharing is the most important part. Letting people know how you're feeling and what you're going through opens their mind and makes them not so reluctant to hide it as well and to actually to think that way as well, I think. Yeah, so, absolutely, mate. That's um, so, so true. And, yeah, thanks, Carlos, Lauren. That's awesome. Mel, can I ask you a question um, before we sort of nearly wrap up because... Uh, Time is going, but um, how 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 are you how do you get through your days, weeks, months, years, Mel? Um, with I just get through them. Um, in relation to mental health and suicide, so and exactly kind of what Carlos was saying. When at first, when something very close to you leaves, um, a partner, a daughter, a mother. Um, it feels it's overwhelming. And then for me, life didn't really start because I, I run events, as Andy was saying. Um, the funeral, all of that was like fine. I was on autopilot. I was being productive. If anything, it was practicality. Um, yeah. Certified death certificates, certified death certificates, closing the banks. It actually gave me something to do. Um, and then it gets quiet. And then six months in that, you know, eight months That's in, then it gets quiet. Absolutely. And that's when, and, uh, you know, the reality is people continue on with their lives. The reality is that life does go on. But for those that are immediately bereaved in that inner circle, I was very like, well, life doesn't really go on. You know, sorry for my language just there, but it was, it was a, it, I was agitated, I was frustrated, and I did everything that I could to kind of um, very much keep Angus alive in that, in that first year. Um, but in that healing process, I think even now, like I, I keep him alive through, through my memories, through my advocacy and the, the memories are the way that I help with his legacy or keep his legacy alive has evolved and it's changed. And Angus has now saved so many other people's lives just by being through me. I'm just the vessel. And I think what Carlos was saying as well, it is so much bigger than you, um, this purpose and this mission story that we've all kind of come together and had this lived experience, we know that because we're advocating because we know it's bigger than us. It's not so much what is our story and let's just keep talking about our story. It's how can now this story help someone else's story, help someone else's journey. Each and every one of us need to be in this space. This space is there is so much more room. To continue i'm always encouraging people to like share your lived experience share your story because what might resonate with lauren might not resonate with someone else but that person needs matt's story and then someone might listen to matt's and nothing triggers but then they hear my story and they go that was it they were the particular words that were threaded in a certain way at a moment in time that i needed so we need to continue to share that story um Lived experience now is getting a lot more recognition than once what it once was. People are identifying that, yes, professional help seekers, um, helpers are important. Psychologists and therapists and counsellors, which we've touched on, they have a place in this world, but there's a huge place for lived experience as well because stories are the things that move us. They're the things that we remember. Um, I've listened to Matt's story time and time and time again over the four to five years that we've worked together and it's the way that he makes me feel. It's not so much, you know, what did he say in that particular 
particular moment in time, but he's got this gra- like effect where it's I can walk away and go, Matt made me feel a certain way. And that's the same as Lauren after this session as well. Both of you, um, you've left me feeling a certain way. And it reminds me of just how precious life is and how important this life's work is. And that's something that I'm incredibly grateful for from this call. And they're the moments in time that you you need to continue to find those moments, find those moments of gratitude, find those moments of feeling blessed. Not every, when you ask me, Andy, what, you know, how do you get by every day? I think it's finding that, finding the little things in life that actually add up to be the biggest things. Um, being able to wake up, for me, being able to make my bed is a really critical routine for me because for me, when I wake up and I can make my bed, that once upon a time in my life, I couldn't make my bed because mm. I was so riddled with depression that taking a shower was too much. Taking a shower and getting out of bed was just way too much effort. So for me, every day now that I'm able to make my bed, that's a win for me. That um, if I can tick that one thing off, I'm good because I've set, I've, I've, I've achieved something. Yeah, that's well, fantastic. Well, can I ask you something? Yes, please. Um, on that situation you were saying, have you, I've had days where I felt guilty for not thinking about my daughter. Uh, some days you just can't do it. Some days you get up and you think having her in my head is going to make it so impossible for me to get through my day. And I used to feel guilty about thinking lock her out of my head. But some days you need to do that. Some days you need to just get on with life, continue as yourself and try not to think about them and let them hold you back because as much as they're a memory – they can also you can also use against you to stop you from going forward. And I've had that situation where I, I spent a lot of time feeling bad about that, like uh, not looking at a picture as much during the day so I could get through the day. And some days I'll have no problem talking about it all day long, you know, no problems with memories, photos, all that sort of stuff. But some days you just can't do it. And I wanted to explain how a lot of times people feel guilty for not always thinking about that person. Um, they're always going to put your heart in your head, but some days you need to shut down just to get through the day. And I've had days where I've almost had to not even mention my daughter's name on the on the verge of just collapsing, you know. And I think a lot of people don't realise that you can do that. You can turn off for a little while to get through the day because you have to keep going. So mm. I think a lot of people expect you to constantly have every thought. It's it, it it'd be great to be able to do that but it's just not possible. <laughs> it's just... Well, that's things. a really... Um, well, I actually never... I mean, I saw, I guess I did think about it, but I didn't think about it hearing it like that, you know. Um, that's a really important... Uh, it's self-preservation, yeah. basically. <laughs> yeah. Because at the end of the day, your daughter's life on this earth has passed, but you, exactly. are, very much, you are very much alive and here in this world. And if you don't live exactly. and show up in your life, you're not doing anyone justice. You're not doing anyone good when you're That's still right. living in that past. The past is a massive part of who you are. But yeah. if you keep telling yourself the same story and keep looking in the past, that's where depression lies. Depression exists because we're nostalgic or we think about a time that mm -hmm. once was. For you to be able to live mindfully and presently and even experience yeah. gratitude, you can't be in the past. Happiness is a hard one. It used to feel good. I, I couldn't agree more. The first time that, um, so when Gus first died, I accepted that I was a widow. That was kind of my mentality. Um, I was a woman that is going to be just like my boyfriend died of suicide. And then that was my identity. I made it my identity. And then yeah. as time passed, I found new love and new meaning in life. And that first few relationships, um, they taught me so much about myself because it raised so much guilt. I remember moments when I would find pure happiness and I'd be laughing and I'd pull myself back on it because I was like, I can't be, why am I feeling happiness? Exactly. I don't deserve to be feeling happiness. What the fuck? <laughs> exactly.